Good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you be watching this transmission. Tis I, your humble servant, Mike Martins. So we're going to go in and around what's happening in Canada with this housing thing. But before you click off, if you're from Australia, New Zealand, or the UK, or the United States of America, I got a little something at the end of this show that's coming to a city near you. Because remember all this crap about um, what's happening with uh, supply and demand and blah, 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 and uh, trying to make affordability and getting affordability out there for everyone to own or everyone to at least have a shelter over their head, working two jobs nonstop, but still can't manage to get food on the table because everything they're making is going towards rent. Anyways, okay, so welcome to Let's Fix This Shortage, episode 402,000. Anyways... Let me fix this here. Uh, all right, so let's 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 brisk through this real quick. Toronto's housing market, like Vancouver, has become a magnet for money laundering. We know this. I've covered it. Uh, once hot Vancouver markets, Toronto and Vancouver luxury home sales are falling, but they're up in Montreal. They're up in Montreal because they're up in Montreal because the average uh, luxury house is still way under a million bucks. So, and like houses like this, this is not a. This is very small. This is a very small home, but it looks big, right? So it, it's just, they call them, I don't know what they call luxury. Is it luxury because everything's marble inside? I don't understand. Like, I don't know how it works. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's the city of Vancouver there. Yeah. So we all know that the, the luxury market takes a nice punch in the gut before uh, anything else. But things are up in Montreal. Bidding wars are still continuing in the spring time. I'm getting news on the ground that bidding wars have moved to moved to um, the, the province of Quebec. And uh, in Belfast, in Northern Ireland, they're coming back up again because you can still pick up something for under 200 euros in, in, in uh, Northern Ireland. And now that's getting eaten up by foreign investing. Oh, this guy looks so nice. Anyways, okay, so let's continue here. Our buddy Trudeau reannounce its budget measures around housing crunch in bc so uh, prime minister capping off bc visit with housing by election announcements so prime minister justin trudeau is set to make several appearances in british columbia on monday one to reannounce plans to support housing affordability in the fraser valley and other to campaign with by-election candidates on Vancouver Island. Trudeau reannounced federal budget measures to help home buyers in Maple Ridge. So here in the interior, Maple Ridge, where tensions around a homeless... Well, Maple Ridge is in the lower mainland in the interior. I'm in Thompson, Nicola. So I'm in a little different part. And then and then it's the Okanagan, right? So I'm, I'm in the Thompson, Nicola region, okay? So I'm we're neighbors to the interior basically is what it is maple ridge where tensions and homeless encampment knows as antita place have risen in recent weeks with destructive fires and eviction notices creating a back and forth between residents and the city and the, and the city and the province so they're going to try and work something out um the naimo ladysmith there's a lot of other little cities in the interior where a lot of people left the main city of vancouver and went east because of affordability levels and no one could compete with foreign investing. There's just too much money being brought in. We, there's no way that Canadian proper could afford that. So everybody moved into the, 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 the smaller cities like myself and the housing's gone up here. I even got a call from somebody, not my real estate agent, but some somebody called me and asked me if I was willing to sell my house. I'm like, I look at the phone, is this a joke? No, it's just there's a, a couple from Vancouver, like the area and the cul-de-sac here and they're willing to pay this much for your house. I'm like, what and then i told my wife she's like no we need a pl we need a place to raise our kids we and i'm like yeah we didn't buy this place to make money i don't care um i don't care i just want a place that i could lay my head and raise my kids and have no worries and tofino housing crisis causing some to seek shelter at the local hospital so there's major major tofino is on the edge of victoria island uh west so i'll show you what pictures look uh, look like um uh, to Fino, BC. Everyone always looks up the weather there because it's like a really beautiful place. Let's go to images. I'll give you guys a little tour. This is what Tofino looks like right there. It's got Long Beach, not Snoop Dogg Long Beach, but this is Long Beach Resort in Tofino. They have little co co cottages and homes there that you could rent. You could rent Long Stay if you like. There's places like this. People like it's really nice. It's like right at the edge of uh, Victoria. So it's, it's basically if there's a tsunami, 
this place would get hit first. There it is there. A lot of cottages, lots of harbor cottages here. Whew. A lot of beautiful uh, views here. So it, it's basically the far western part of the island of Victoria. And here it is here. So the island of Victoria is, let me here, let me show you here. So it's like, I'm just trying to find, yeah, it's on this highway here. It just, yeah, I'm going to, here it is, Tofino. It's at the edge here. Oh, there it is, Tofino. Really nice, really nice layout there. Very beautiful place. And the homeless is just getting rampant there. And the price of housing is just skyrocketing there right now. And it's gotten to a point where the local hospital has to take in homeless people. So anyways, that's not, this is Toronto. Sorry, I just wanted to show you guys there. Uh, let me just break this. Let me just show you guys. Look at the surfing there. Remember, this is right at the edge there. So let me see if I can get a map. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. There's Victoria Island right here. Or Vancouver Island. But I call it Victoria Island because it's the capital is Victoria. Anyways, so you take the highway around and you come up here in this Tofino. I've been there several times. Uh, you could take the Highway 4 here to it through Nanaimo. So, yeah. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Now let's go to the big, 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 big story now. So what is coming soon to a city near you? Well, there's quite a bit coming soon to a city near you. I hope you're ready for this. The Interior News. I just got somebody calling me here. Okay. Okay, so Interior News. BC becomes the first province to allow 12-story timber buildings. Premier Horgan announced... Okay, let me say that again. BC becomes the first province to allow 12-story timber timber buildings. So let's look up some timber buildings here. Let's see what they are. It's all wood is what it is. So it's like this. It's all... Well, I don't know if this is all wood. It looks like it's a ton of concrete here, but uh, I guess this is a timber building. Yeah, so they're going to start doing... Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is what they're doing. So they're going to do 12-story. The, the the law until now, I guess, was three-story. One, two, three. So the law was three-story timber buildings were allowed. But now they're looking at doing 12-story timber buildings. What? How do you anchor in... How would you anchor in a proper elevator? Like, I'm not an engineer, and I don't know this stuff, so I'm hoping you guys could help me in the comments section. Because I have no idea what the heck is going on here. But I'm going to need somebody to look at this and tell me, how does a 12-story timber building going to work? I could see a three-story working, kind of a little house on the prairie type of thing, three stories. We don't have the old height uh, values that we did. Like in my house, the ceilings are about 12 feet. It's because it's an older building. It was older standards. These are not 12-foot ceilings. So or 13 or whatever, 14-foot ceilings or whatever is, is is the old way of doing it, right? Wow. Okay, so now they're going to be doing these three-story wood structures. All right, let's go back. 12-story, okay, I could see maybe four-story, but 12-story timber buildings. BC will be ahead of the rest of Canada, allowing 12-story mass timber buildings, meaning an increase in jobs in manufacturing and in the woods Premier John Horgan said. The current building code allows only six story. Sorry, sorry, I thought it was three story. So it's six story, which I've I have never really seen of six story building of timber. I'm sorry. I've only seen three. Uh, but the national building code is expected to be revised to allow for 12 story buildings in 2020. Mass timber buildings are made of large prefabricated engineered wood for wall, floor, and roof construction. Oh my god, it's another another opal tower headed towards us. Horgan, along with Selena Robson, uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, was struck to and leading mass timber manufacturer Okanagan to make the announcement Wednesday morning. Normally, British Columbia would assess these recommendations and then they would implement a year or two after that. We believe the work has been done. We've got practical example of more than 12 story at Brock Cannons of 18. So we're prepared. We're confident that the work has been done on safety. On safety, 
the work has been done on the on the fire stuff and said the media workers at the mass timber plant so i'm all for creating jobs i'm all for creating uh you know i'm all for that so there's a, an advantage here hold on the advantage of this is seismic side is that wood moves on the earthquake side wood is much better product for construction that's why we're excited about the expert the export potential to place places like japan who already have significant purchasers of bc wood products when we show them that we can do it with engineered wood products like mass timber products developed here i think the export potential is significant to the areas where seismic activity is concerned he said i'm all for this guys i'm all for this like hand to i'm i'm, I'm with this i'm just so used to poured concrete and rebarb for walls and stuff like i'm getting a, an estimate done i'm going to do my driveway i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to do my driveway here right i'm getting an estimate done here right at the house my thing my thing is um my problem is is like they're gonna put concrete and rebarb on my driveway re like laying rebarb and poured concrete they're gonna stamp it for me to look like interlock they're gonna color it for me it's gonna look really nice put a sealant on top no big deal right but what my concern is what are they gonna do for the like i you know, I'm just maybe maybe somebody can invite me onto a site. I can make a video and show how it's, I guess, assembled. I don't know. So if anybody here out there knows what is what and what it, you know, just maybe comment below and let me know. Twelve story timber. I just can't. I, I'm just seeing popsicle sticks when I see that. What do I know? I'm no engineer. Comment below. This might be coming. Like they said, they might be exporting this to Japan. And they might, might be seeing this in other cities as a, a, a more inexpensive way to create housing. Is that is that what it is? Or is it better for the earthquakes? Or is it just a way to create jobs? What do you guys think? I'd like to know. Comment below. Thanks for watching.